And if any of you guys out there are uh, looking for a digging buddy in your state or town, check out uh, findadiggingbuddy.com and fill out the little profile, the digger's profile they call it. Chuck is the uh, president. Make sure when you do your profile to uh, put on your referral that it was Crick Diggers that referred you. Uh, they're now our sponsor and we're getting a little small commission off of referring you guys. So shout out to findadiggingbuddy.com. Stay tuned for the action, guys. What's up, guys? Crick Diggers coming to you Friday morning. Me and Chris is out here at Double Diamond Ridge. Well, he's been out here about two and a half hours. I just got my lazy butt up and trucked out here. He says, you ever heard of a J.S. Cragen? Look at that. Look what, look what uh, marbles popped out here, guys. A beautiful, beautiful druggist from Cumberland, Maryland. J.S. Cragen. I don't think I have this variant. That's a nice one there. He also popped out a broken uh, Willowbrook Dairy. I believe that was Cumberland as well. Pretty hard to find one. And uh, an Edward Hoeing. An Edward Hoeing with the top knocked off of it. Really nice soda from where we actually live at. He's got some bottles laying over here. Looks like a cone ink, some sodas. One of those uh, horseshoe whiskey things. A couple of these. Or this one says pride pride, pride, of, pride, pride of, the of the farm ketchup, ketchup. yeah ketchup bottle is uh pride of long island pride of long island i haven't it's seen that one ketchup. yeah it looks like some kind of a sauce mm -hmm. as well That's what it is, pretty right? cool man heck yeah got a, what a couple druggists over there what's that lichtenstein's ch yeah, holzman dang tearing it up today and then when i heard you come in and a js craigan and it wouldn't even be right if he didn't. He pulled. Dang, that's a uh, that's a real nice. Uh, dang, what's that called? I can't remember what it's called right now, but it's a good one, brother. Brick, I think. Acro brick, maybe. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Well, we're just gonna keep going down in these pockets that uh, we got opened up. See you back, guys. Check this little small Chris just popped out. I mean, he is on a pocket. Let me tell you, it says day. Day trays, synthetic porcelain. It's got a real nice monogram on it down here. Something company. The LD Carlker Company. You guys ever seen that before? That's a pretty cool little bottle. See you back on the next one, guys. Guys, me and Chris is just working this layer down, and I got an amber flask. Amber strap side flask in the hole. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and see what we got. Just a warranted, but it's nice. Look at that. Nice warranted amber. You don't find them very often. Real nice blown in mold. Yeah. Seven ouncer. Real pretty guy. I'll show it better at cleanup, but it's a nice little find, guys. We're gonna keep working this layer down. See you back. Guys, I was just taking uh the next layer down right beside Christopher. Popped out a big Gordon's dry gin laying up there. And then this bottle popped out. I said, dang, that's a cool little cylinder. Look what it says, guys. I've never dug one of these. I'm not going to say it's rare because people are giving me a hard time. So I don't know anything about it. I just know it says Abbott's Bitters. It's the very first Abbott's Bitters that I've ever dug. It is from Baltimore, Maryland. Right here, Baltimore. It says C.W. Abbott and Company. Um, it is machine made, so... Probably 1915 to 1918. But still, really, really nice. Pretty, pretty bitters bottle. Check that out, guys. How about that? We're just going to keep working down this layer. See what else we can come up with. Stay tuned for more.
Guys, I've got something in the hole. I thought it was just a wine bottle, but I can see embossing on it, so not pulling it till we get live. We're live. Chris, hold this for me for a minute, brother. I got a couple bottles sticking out, guys, but this one right here looks like it might have a slug plate or something on it. So I think it's about ready to come out. Yep, here it comes, guys. It's green. It says A. Matea. A. Matea in a slug plate. Dude, that is a wild looking bottle. You guys ever seen that? Is that a wine, Travis? I think it's a wine. It looks like a wine bottle. A. Matea. A. M-A-T-T-E-I. You guys ever seen that bottle? That is wild. I'm pretty sure it's a turn mold. It doesn't have any mold lines on it at all. Yeah. That's a cool looking bottle, guys. No idea about it. Tell me. See you back. Guys, I got another green, uh, little small in the hole. I think this one might be a Larkin. It could be one of those, uh, those little ribbed ones from last time. We'll find out right now. Here it comes. It almost took out. This one's not ribbed. It doesn't say anything on it. it. doesn't have anything on the base of it. But still a beautiful emerald green, blown in mold. Probably a smelling salt of some sort, I would imagine. Really, really pretty. I'll show it better at wrap up, but nice little find, guys. See you back. Guys, Chris has got one of those uh, bowling pin sodas in the hole right here. You can see it's got the picture of the bowling pin on the base of it and the L. We'll go ahead and record this one live. Oh, the top's knocked off of it. Why did it do me like that, Trent? Dang, man. Sorry, buddy. See you back. Guys, it was Chris's turn down in the hole. You see we worked up to the road. Now we're turning. And we're just going to follow it down. And he just popped out this nice little uh, double embossed poison. Check that one out, guys. Yeah, that's a real nice one, Chris. Sweet. Good job on that, brother, man. All right, guys, we'll see you back on the next one. Guys, Chris is in a real nice pocket over here, working towards one of our older holes, almost connected. He got a uh, 1915 hobble skirt Coca-Cola, no town. Light green Melampis, medium sized Bromo Seltzer, and a real nice straight side Coca Cola from Cumberland, Maryland. Blown in mold. Very nice, very nice. He's doing really, really good today. Both of us are. There's his other pile. It's really starting to cool off nice now, guys. So we're just going to keep working at it. See you back if anything else cool comes up. Guys, check it out. Just popped out a uh, real nice Coca-Cola bottling company from Cumberland. Block letter Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's a good one. I'll put that one in uh, tomorrow's auction, guys. Sweet. See you back on the next one. Alright, guys. <clears throat> That's going to do it for today. Chris just took off with his big thing of bottles. We got a lot of bottles today. You can see here. I got my box completely full of bottles. I'm going to do something a little different this time. I'm going to go home and I'm going to make a little video with you guys on how I clean these things. A lot of people still ask me how I clean these. So we're going to go home and clean them together. 
All right, guys. See you at the house. What's up, guys? Crick Diggers coming to you Sunday morning. Saturday. Saturday morning, my fault. I'm a little behind right now. <laughs> but uh, it's morning anyway. I got that part right. I'm out here with Billy and Chris behind 1850s, 1860s house. We probed this big, big, I think it's a stone liner, out last week. But I'm going to flip you around and show you what's going on because I can't see nothing. It is bright, sunny today. All right, guys, so I had to find a, a shady spot because it is bright, sunny today. Billy and Kristen brought out the cooler with ice. God bless them guys. We got a couple tarps. We got a couple trash cans. We got a massive, massive privy probed out, guys. You can see we're cutting the plug now. Some more decent yards, so we got to take our time and be real professional with it, which is no big deal. We appreciate the permission. Billy actually got this one for us, so he'll get first pick out of the hole. That's how it goes. Whoever gets permission gets first pick on the first hole. Why well, did y'all both get it together? Oh, well, that's that's cool. So Billy and Chris both got this permission together, so they'll have to flip a coin for who gets first pick. Then the next one of them will get second pick, and I'll take third pick, and that's how we alternate on privy holes. Somebody was asking me on the YouTube channel. So that's how we do it. And then when you're digging in the dump, whoever digs it gets it. But uh, all right guys, we're gonna see you guys back as soon as we get this opened up and something cool comes out. Yeah man, Crick Diggers Incorporated. Check it out on YouTube and Facebook. Been doing this about six years. We go into the back of old houses, locate the old outhouses or privies they call them, find the walls, and now, now it's just like opening up a big present. I've seen you on, uh, what is it? You say YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube and Facebook. Okay. All right, guys, we'll see you right back. All right, guys, we're finishing up cutting the plug out. What is it, Billy? Blue glass. Blue glass? Yeah. Pretty piece of cobalt glass that just popped out of the hole. A couple pieces of bone came out and some uh, sub piece of a salt glazed crock. So we got the plugs pretty much out, guys. Finishing up the last one now. And then we're going to get to digging. Hopefully, this is going to be loaded up. It's a big, big privy, I tell you that. All right, guys. See you back. Guys, this one's done. Filled it, replugged it. Probed another one out right here under the walkway. You can see where Billy's trying to locate the walls. And, uh, yeah. The only thing that came out of this one right here was two marbles. Two marbles right here. A blue and yellow swirl and just a regular clay. That's it, guys. What you got? Oh, yeah. There's a poop, poop on that thing. See that, guys? All right, well, we're going to open this area up here next. See back if anything else cool comes out, guys. So far, that's the pines. Oh, man. He said it tasted like poop. <laughs> <laughs> See you back. Guys, that ended up being uh, just a nothing. There was some big rocks and stuff down there we thought might have been a stone wall, but it was a nothing. We probed this whole entire yard all the way around and found nothing so just going to show you my brand new tripod i just got yesterday to help out with some filming really really nice tripod there guys holds my phone right here it's got like a level on it right here and a little adjuster right here to move it up and down by twisting it pretty cool should help me make some really nice quality videos, but for today, I think we're done, guys. I'm still really, really tired from the auction, and we're just not finding it. We'll see you back next time, guys. What's up, guys? Crick Diggers coming to you. Monday morning, me and Corey Wellings is uh, back out here behind this 1840s house permission. 
we got a couple more lots probed out um i got a new tripod set up and all that good stuff so uh check this out guys all right guys so we got this shallow pit probed out right here it goes under the fence a little bit so i already took the liberty of going over and talking to the neighbor got that permission as well and the one up across from it as well so we're good on that me and Corey's gonna cut a small little plug right here open it up and see what we can get into guys stay tuned for the action Here guys, we just pulled the plug up. Just started going down in the ground. It's a nice clay marble right there. Heck yeah. Pretty good for first find. You see everything good? Yeah. All right, let's keep going. All right, guys, <clears throat> live in my kitchen for the bottle cleaning process. There's my box of bottles that need clean. Probably about 25 of them in there. We use my buddies over at Super Clean, sent me some uh, dissolved grease and stuff. So I use that. Then my buddy Wayne over at jardoctor.com. Sent me this stuff, short cut copper, number 21. And I also used some steel wool. Now this is you get for washing dishes, not regular steel wool. And then I have my little sieve over there. I'll show you how it all works. I'm going to get everything set up for you. And we're going to get started on cleaning these bottles, guys. Stay tuned for the secret. Alright guys, we're going to start with this really, really dirty 
Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound that I dug today. Filthy. Very first thing I'm going to do, guys, is just give her a rinse with lukewarm water. Try to get most of the dirt and stuff off. I'm just using my hands, trying to wipe the dirt off. Anything that'll scratch the glass. Fill it up with water a little bit. Give it a little shake. That's about the maximum you can do to your bottle without having something that goes down inside of that little opening. So, what I use is the copper that I showed you. And I, I take my funnel here. Let me make sure you can see how I'm going to set up. So I take the funnel here. Set it on top of my bottle. So now I'm going to fill my bottle up, about a quarter of the way full, not quite a quarter of the way full, as you can see, copper, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is add my water line just past the copper. So you can see my water line just past the copper, okay? I'm going to grab my super clean. Give it a couple squirts down in there, maybe three, four, five, something like that. I'm gonna put my hand over top of the opening and shake it. Shake the bottle. Back and forth, rotating it around. Just spinning it around in my hand, giving it a good shake. That's about it, guys. That is about it. Set my sieve out. Pour the copper back out into it. Like so. Give her a good rinse. The outside, I just use my steel wool for it. Don't do this if there's a label or anything, but the embossing, it won't hurt it. It won't scratch the glass. Obviously, you use this stuff to clean your dishes. So, I'm basically just giving it a light scrub all around the outside of the bottle. I think I might have spent two minutes on this bottle. Guys, you're going to be amazed at what it looks like now. Just from that cut copper super clean and some good old-fashioned elbow grease you don't have to try to you know put coat hangers or, or some kind of bottle brush or anything like that that might uh, chip the lip or anything and there it is guys a beautiful beautiful Lydia Pinkham's let me show you before the Sun goes down real quick what we got look at that Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound nice and clean and ready for a uh, cleanup shot pictures so I'm gonna set the tripod up again and we're gonna redo the same thing on the next bottle see that all right guys the very next one we're gonna do is that awesome wine bottle you guys seen me pop out earlier with the A Matea slug plate on it same deal guys, I'm just going to give it a nice little rinse in lukewarm water. It does have some rust build up on the outside of it. So I can still feel rust build up on the outside of it, guys. I don't know if you can see it or not. Kind of right in here. There's some rust and stuff. There's steel wool for washing dishes. 
take it right off. Just give it a light scrubbing on the outside. And I'm gonna do this before I clean the inside, just to show you guys the incredible difference that this cut copper does. So the outside's pretty much done. But if you hold it up to the light, you see all the uh, staining and stuff still in there, guys. Yeah, all, all the stuff inside of it, look, all that nastiness. So, here's how you deal with that. Same deal, guys. Put your funnel over there. Dump your copper down in there like so. Fill up your water line just over the copper. Give her a couple good shakes. Back and forth. Spinning it as I go. You can go real fast. You can go slower. You can go around it. Dump it out. After about you know 30 seconds to a minute, give it a nice little good rinse. Look at that, guys! That is a beautiful, beautiful, like almost emerald green color. A Matea. Oh wow. That came out really, 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 really nice. Clean as can be now. You can see, there's nothing left inside the bottle. It just needs dried off. There it is, guys. Another beautiful bottle. Cleaned in just a, a minute or two with cut copper. Do a couple more for you real quick and show you. And I think I, I'm going to do the little wrap up. Stay tuned for a little bit more. Alright guys. Here's a really nice uh, cornflower blue Phillips Milk and Mag. A little bigger one. But you can see it is really, really, really dirty. Most of all that's on the inside of it. Not real big opening to get down in there with anything. But... Once again, give it a quick rinse. There's the cork that was down in it. That's pretty cool. Save these and let them dry out. You can sometimes reuse them. Pretty neat though. Set the funnel down in there. If the funnel won't go inside of it, which it definitely will on this one, just hold it cup it the best that you can while you fill it with copper otherwise you're going to dump it all over your counter and have a mess got the copper in there going to fill the water line up just a little above it guys just like so give her some shakes flip her over back and forth dump her out give her another quick rinse I mean see there's still some dirt and stuff on there so I know that's on the outside so I just have an old toothbrush that I use and that'll all just come right off with the toothbrush if it won't, I'll take the uh, steel wool and give it a little scrub. Like on the back here is some stuff that is being stubborn. So I'll just take my steel wool and give her a little scrub. Like that. Another quick rinse. There we go, guys. A beautiful, beautiful cornflower blue 
Phillips Milk of Magnesia for the auction tomorrow night. Blown in mold. Real nice bottle. Heck yeah. Sit you back down here. We're going to go over something that is not bottle. So you know how to clean the bottles now. The cut copper secret is out. All of you get it. Wayne, super nice guy over at uh, jardoctor.com. Tell him Crick Digger sent you. Maybe he'll give me a little freebie for it. I don't know. But here's a, uh, a beautiful glass or crystal lid that we dug today. And uh, so obviously you can't put copper in there, right? Same deal, guys. Just give it a quick little rinse. And I just use my handy dandy old toothbrush for the lids and stuff like that. So basically I'm just going to brush it. Just hold it under the water and just brush it all around. Flip it over. Same way, just brush it. Try to get all the little creases anywhere I see dirt. This is actually a beautiful, beautiful lid, guys. I mean, I don't know what it goes to, but I'm sure I could find something that it fits. I always keep things like this. You just never know when you're gonna do the other part of it. And they're absolutely just beautiful. So just by taking my toothbrush, guys, look at this beautiful lid now. Sparkling. Real nice, check it out. Yeah, that's really, really, really pretty. All right, let's do one more. One more. And then we'll get all these cleaned up and get pictures taken before it gets too dark out. I try to do it when the sun's still out in the background so I can get the best photography on these bottles for you guys. Let's do this little uh, Abbott's Bitters. Very common bottle, but the first one I've dug, you can see it's real, real uh, dirty. Real dirty. So we're going to give her a quick, quick rinse. Lukewarm water. Just try to get all the surface dirt off pretty much. Any kind of mud or rocks or anything that might be mixed in there that might scratch the glass. Clean the inside out real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and steal wool the outside. Guys, you can do this with any glass at all. I even do it with funnel glass. Just just be careful because it's real thin and you can uh, press through it. It's real thin like paper. No fear of, of it doing this on this. This is a machine 1915, 1920 bottle. So no fear of it breaking on me. Stick your funnel down in there like so. Pour your copper in. Fill the line up just past your copper line. Shake that puppy dog. Get that frustration out, guys. All the stress for the day. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Or you can be gentle with it if you're scared. But that, that copper is real soft. Won't well, hurt the glass at all. It's actually what I use in my bottle tumbling machine. With really expensive bottles. So it's made for it. It's made for the bottles. It's made for the glass. That's going to be the last one, guys. Check that bitters out. It's real, real dark. Real dark. Let's see if it can shine in here. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful Abbott's bitters. But that's gonna do it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the little tutorial on how to clean these things. All right, guys. We'll do one more. Let's do this really, really dirty block letter Coca-Cola. Absolutely filthy. Right now. 
it's not very appeasing to look at even in the light it's it's just nasty filthy so let's see what we can do with our little contraption that i told you about quick rinse in lukewarm water quick scrub down with the steel wool on the outside now I am seeing a good bit of bruising on the bottom of this guys I guess from the pressure under the ground but the top's in real good shape there's no holes in it so it should still sell decent but you can see it's still got a lot of dirt down in there so watch this how do you get that out huh you just pour your copper down in there like so about that much fill her up with some water it's real dirty so i'm gonna give it one squirt of the super clean and get you shaking get you shaking guys You see a little bit of uh, case wear, they call it, that line going across the middle. You can tumble that out, but it's going to take about nine days. So, we're not going to do that today. For right now, we're just going to give it a good rinse real quick. that's it guys that is it check out that beautiful block letter coca-cola and you can see like i said it has some damage on it but that was already like that that was not done by the cleaning process really nice beautiful block letter coca-cola from cumberland maryland guys and that is how you clean bottles the fastest and most effective way that I have found at all. People use, you know, chemicals and stuff that they soak them in. They gotta be outside. You gotta wear special gloves and stuff. This way right here, barehanded, couple shakes, and done. Hope you guys enjoyed this small tutorial and the digging footage before this. You're all awesome. See you next time, guys.